me. I'm a righteous man of God. I don't have to make an excuse for sin. My God, I don't have to lie. I don't have to cheat. I don't have to beg. I don't have to do none of that. But I got something on the inside of me. My God, that's God Almighty. That thing was able to take a hold of your flesh. That thing was able to take a hold of your tongue. That you might have a righteous life because God is coming back for who? The clean, the pure, hallelujah. Those who are holy are not coming back for somebody whose garments are spotted, thus saith the Lord. I'm not coming back for somebody that's trying to get it right. I gave you the Holy Ghost. You got it right, right there. Why dare you? How dare you try to turn back and use, amen, said even as an excuse. Even at the time, for a time, my God, there are righteous people. I can go a day without sinning. I can go a week without sinning. I can go a year, year without sinning because it's the Holy Ghost. My God, who's to tell me that I can't? God has given us power to do so. My God, Jesus. But we don't have to lie. Uh, I don't have to put somebody else down to get their attention. Uh, we might have to struggle sometimes. Amen. Uh, my God, but I know that he's going to cause me to triumph. Amen. Uh, I know that I can overcome with God. Uh, I know that I can be changed with God. Uh, I know that he will create in me a new heart, uh, a clean heart. Uh, even in my struggling, I might be upset sometimes uh, when I'm going through my hard times. Uh, I might want to cry sometimes when I'm in my desperate times. Uh, I might have to be like their mom. I mean, ask God, what's going on inside of me? Uh, there's a struggle inside of me while I'm in this wilderness place, Lord God. Uh, God, in the cry of the Lord. Uh, but I know that I'm going to attain the promise as long as I have God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to obtain the promise. Thank you, Jesus. So as we see and we know in the story that Jacob, he went unto his uncle Laban after he got the birthright. And that, and that Isaac blessed him. God, excuse me. Isaac told him to go unto Laban that he might take a wife. Uh, man, and there's some more to it. Uh, but Laban, we know that Laban tricked him, didn't he? Uh, Laban fooled him a couple of times, didn't he? Uh, come on, he went to marry one, uh, but he found himself married marrying another and he had to work harder in order to get for the things that he really wanted oh my god ain't that just a lie and a trick of the enemy god has promised you some things and you out there working you out there slaving you out there working twice as hard twice as long to get what you really want and it's because you're not in covenant relationship with god you think you gotta lie cheat and steal you think you still gotta hold on to the flesh amen you think you still gotta hold up to amen amen to, to jacob's name but God says what I got for you and it's for you when he gives it to you it's easy because obedience is actually easy my God it's easy to obey God thank you Jesus uh, but after several years and, and tracks uh, excuse me and tricks being played on him he was out tricked by a greater tricker and his uncle Laban uh, Jacob then decided to make his way back to his promise make thank you Jesus uh, he decided then to make his way back to Bethel the house of God Genesis chapter 28 verse 16 and 17 he met God at a certain place and he called it this is the house of God this is Bethel Genesis chapter 31 verses 11 and 13 this is when he's turning back to God to go back to his land and the angel of God said unto me in a dream saying Jacob and I said here I am my God if you haven't wakened up yet amen all you need to say God here I am and he said lift up now thine eyes and see all the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring stacked speckled and gristled for I have seen all that Laban has done unto thee God has seen everything that we had to struggle and go through just to get here he saw what you had to go through. Come on, he saw the renewed mind state. Uh, he saw stepping out of your comfort zone. Uh, come on, he saw stepping out, amen, on faith that you might get here to this one place, amen. Uh, my God, in verse 13, it says, I am the God of Bethel. When thou anointest the pillar, when thou vowest a vow unto me, now arise and get thee up out of this land and return unto the land of thy kindred. Uh, so Jacob is it's on his way back for the return. My God, somebody say it's the return. It's the return. I know God is on his way back. Amen. My God, he is surely to come. At this point, Jacob was between his redemption and his promise. He was right at the point where he knew. 
knew he could not operate like he used to. We know that we find ourselves in Tulsa. We find ourselves on our jobs and we know that we cannot operate like we used to. Uh, come on, there's there's new policies. Uh, come on, there, there's new people that we have to talk to. Uh, there's a new mind state that people have around us. So when we witness to it, we got to witness to them in the spirit of God. I cannot operate like I used to. Uh, God has caused me to grow up. God has caused me to change. Amen. My way is about some things. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, but Jacob knew that he could not do the same thing that he could not uh, do. In, uh, he could not do the same thing that he used to. Uh, he could not get what God promised uh, even his grandfather Abraham and his father Isaac. Uh, instead of trying to trick and get to the, uh, to get to the next level, Jacob said, "I'm going to do something different." Jacob said, "I'm going to fight." He said, "I'm going to fight." Jacob was not a fighter, church. His brother was the fighter. Jacob had to lie, cheat, steal, and connive. He was a surplanter. Esau was a man in the fields. Esau could wrestle. Come on, Esau, come on, Esau, he could put you down if he wanted to. Because he was a man. Come on, he was what we call a manly man. My God, people wanted to be like him. They saw his strength. They saw his stature. They saw his appearance. He's been hairy since his days of birth. It seemed like he was mature to take the birthright in the first place. My God, but God looks, amen, on the inside, not at the outside. God knows you. So when he says this is for you, don't be ashamed. Take it. My God. But Jacob was not a fighter, but he had something rise up within him. Thank you, Jesus. And Jacob was left alone in Genesis chapter 32, verses 24 through 29. And it reads, and Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled a man and with him until the breaking of the day. So Jacob wrestled and he wrestled and he justed for position. He tried to get on top, he found his way on the bottom. He tried to get on the side, he still found his way in the bottom. But one thing for sure though, Jacob was not letting go because it took him a while just to get to that one place, just to get back to Bethel, just to get back to the house of God. Amen, just to find a place, amen. So he found himself alone and he was wrestling with the man to the breaking of day. Even as his hip went out of socket, he still what? He still wrestled. Even when the man said, let me go because the day is coming, Jacob said, I'm not going to let you go. I don't care about the time. I don't care where you got to go. I don't care how long it takes, amen. Until you bless me, I shall not let you go. So this is what he was saying about time. Though it wait, I'm going to wait for it. Though it tarry, I know it's still going to come. My God, though he slay me, guess what? And I'm wrestling, I'm still going to trust in him. Those that wait upon the Lord, we know that their strength shall be what? Their strength shall be renewed. They're going to mount up like the wings of eagles. My God, Jacob said, until you bless me, I am not going to let go. I will not let go. So Jacob wrestled. And he wrestled. And here, this is where I'm getting ready to close at. It's, it's amazing when you stop wrestling with yourself. Have you ever seen somebody wrestle with themselves before? They're in doubt a lot. They don't have confidence. Jacob used to wrestle with himself. But he said, instead of trying to trick myself to do things, try to read the new philosophy or the new book, I'm going to fight. I'm going to stand for what God has promised me. God, you promised it unto my daddy. You promised it unto my dad. There's a word that was spoken over my life even before I got here. And even as I was in the womb, there was a word spoken over my life that the elder should serve the younger. My God. And I, so he wrestled. Uh, my God, it's amazing, amen, when you even stop trying to wrestle and fight other people. Uh, come on, because you know what happens when you fight other people? It brings out the worst in you. Uh, my God, it's going to bring out the worst in you when you fight other people. Uh, it brings out the worst, because what are you trying to do? You're trying to overcome the individual. So by, it, by any means necessary, uh, whatever it takes, you're, it's going to bring out the worst in you, whether you got to lie, cheat, or steal, amen. You might say, I didn't mean for all this to happen, uh, but my God, you see what happens when you fight other people and not the, the spirit, amen, and with the spirit of God? My God, it's going to bring out the worst in you, and then you're going to be left with the mess. You're going to have a broken relationship. You're going to have 
people wonder, or you're going to be wondering when, or excuse me, you're going to be wondering uh, uh, if somebody is coming back to get you. My God, but when you wrestle with God, something else happens. When you find yourself wrestling with God, uh, it brings out the best in you, baby. Uh, it brings out the precious oils. It brings out the refined gold, the silver. It brings out the fruit of the spirit. Uh, I found myself, I'd rather wrestle with God than with man. Uh, I'd rather contend, listen to me, with God than with man. Because if I wrestle with myself, I'm doubting. Amen. Uh, if I wrestle with other people, the worst is coming out of me. Uh, but when I wrestle with God, God is refining me. God is putting things in me. God is taking some things out of me. God is strengthening my core. God is strengthening my mindset. God is establishing me. My God, he's bringing the best out of me that I might be pure as gold. My God, so many people, they wrestle against God. But God is saying, you need to wrestle with me. You need to be beside me wrestling with me. Don't wrestle against me. Don't wrestle against yourself. Don't wrestle against your brothers or your sisters on the street. You need to wrestle and contend with me. So we find ourselves at this point that Jacob found himself, I should say, that he was wrestling and saying, God, you got to bless me. I cannot go back home looking the same way, doing the same thing. I got to have something that makes a difference. Don't you know when you got the Holy Ghost, that was something in you that made the difference. My life did not change until I had the Holy Ghost. It doesn't take a lottery ticket to change your life. It doesn't take an apology for somebody to change your life. What it takes is the Holy Ghost. My God, it takes the encounter with God to change your life. So he was wrestling with God. My God, he was wrestling with God, not against God, but he was wrestling with God till the breaking of day. My God, and this is when the day chase came. He, the, 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 the angel, the man, as the Bible would say, and asked him, what is your name? And he said, and Jacob replied, my name is Jacob. Uh, amen. But the angel said, uh, no more Jacob, but Israel, meaning he will rule as God. As God. Meaning we're going to be like him. We're Christians, right? Followers of Christ, right? We want to be like him. I don't want to be him, God. I don't want to take up a God. I want to be like you. God is giving you the Holy Ghost, his DNA, so you will be what? Like him. Because in your flesh, you can do nothing. In your flesh comes no good thing. Dwelleth no good thing. All that is in the flesh is the pride of life, the pride of your eyes. Come on. And the pride of life. That's, that's what's in your flesh. My God, but once God takes you out, boom, hits you in the hollow of your thigh, come on, almost seems to knock you out, my God, God says, I'm going to change your name, and you're going to be like me, he will rule as God, thank you, Jesus, uh, and in verse 28, he says, uh, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel, for as a prince that has power with God and with man and has prevailed. It's amazing what happens when you wrestle with God. When you contend with God. You know you got a blessing on the way. You know what you need to do. You need to be wrestling God about it. Don't fight against God. Don't kick against the pricks like he told Saul. My God, before he was named Paul. Come on, you need to wrestle and contend with God. As long as you are on the Lord's side, there is nothing that God's going to withhold from you. God says, I'm going to give you every promise. You're going to ask of things, amen. And he says, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you because you are one who rules as God, like God, okay? You have prevailed. You have wrestled and you have prevailed, amen. Uh, you have prevailed with man and you have prevailed with God. Uh, God has given us a name chase. Uh, so I'm here to tell you that God has given us a name chase. Uh, we are no longer little people in the eyes of other people, but we are giants in the land. Uh, we are not failures, but we are overcomers. Uh, come on, we are possessors. We are conquerors. Uh, God has called us to be great in this time and in this hour because we have wrestled with God for the promises of God. Uh, my God did not against him, but God has blessed us and he has given us a name change. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that I could go to Revelations uh, and I can see that there is a name that was written on the people of God's forehead. Uh, they be Excuse me, the name coming to be Jesus. Uh, my God, God has given us a name. He 
has placed his name on us, church. Uh, so, my God, I don't look at myself like I'm a small person. Amen. Uh, I humble myself before God. Uh, but when God called me to get up and say, get up, you man of valor. Uh, get up, you man of courage. Uh, go preach in the barbershop. Uh, go talk on the corners. Uh, go preach in Walmart. Uh, go be a witness. Uh, God is putting the word inside of your mouth. Uh, and God has said, I am giving you a name change. Uh, when people see you, uh, they're not going to know you as their own deceptive in individual. But they're going to see you as a man of God. Uh, they're going to see you as a woman of God. Uh, because you have prevailed against with God and against man. Hallelujah. I have prevailed. And I have received a name change. Uh, so I ask you, church, what is your name? Church, I ask you, what is your name? You used to be a liar? You used to be a cheater? Come on, you used to what? Still? My God, but I'm holy. God has called me righteous. I'm the one you call a holy roller. I'm the one that's not ashamed to worship before God. I'm not ashamed to cry out before God. I'm not afraid to say, I need you, Jesus. Uh, you can call me what you want, uh, but God has given me a name and called me by name. Uh, I don't have to do the same thing anymore. And not just that, but God has given me my promises. My God, as long as I obey him as we're standing to our feet. Thank you, Jesus. God has given us a name change. I want to know what name are you walking in? Come on, are you walking in the name of the Lord? What you doing for Christ, are you doing it for him? Or are you doing it for yourself? Come on, are you doing it for your next advancement? Are you doing it, amen, because you want to see your name in neon lights? Or are you doing it because you're doing it for the name of the Lord? God is giving you promises. He has changed your name. Come on, church. He has changed it. He said, I'm changing it for the better. I'm working this thing out for your good. Uh, if you trust me, if you do what I'm telling you to do, I'm guaranteeing you, you're going to be blessed. Uh, you don't have to lie, cheat, or steal to get what God is getting ready to bless you with, refiner's fire. God has already promised and it's already on its way. My God, these altars are open even at this time. God, we thank you. We love you. We appreciate you, Lord God. God, we thank you. We love you. Love you and we appreciate you Lord God God we thank you we love you and we appreciate you Lord God my God there was a time when I found myself like Jacob trying to make it in the world